Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now this is going to be a very interesting lesson. We're going to be going through the story of the slaughter of Nabi Ismail السلام, Now I've explained in a previous lesson why the slaughtered son of Ibrahim was Ismail and not Ishaq. And I've shown a number of proofs from the Quran itself. This is going to be a very interesting analysis, inshallah. And it's going to be going through a new perspective. We're going to be looking at this from the linguistics of the ayat mentioned in Surat as safat where it's mentioned. So, if we go to Surat as safat it mentions, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ So after making the dua, Ibrahim Islam is given the good tidings of a son. And the sifa mentioned is that he will be Halim, having forbearance. And this perfectly matches the incident that's going to happen, where forbearance is the main attribute needed. So when Ismail was told by Ibrahim Islam that he was commanded to slaughter him, emotionally he needed to have this forbearance. And he accepted and told his father that he will be patient. Now prior to getting to the slaughter, an interesting point. It says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ And when he got to the age where he was able to help his father with work. So I explained earlier, this is probably about maybe 12, 13 years of age. What's interesting also is there's another interpretation of this. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ Here, السَّعِيَ could also mean the going between Safa and Marwa that happens in Hajj. So when he had completed the Sa'i with his father is another opinion. And it's quite possible that both meanings were intended. So he waited till he was at the age we could help his father and before he telling him that he had to slaughter him he made the Sa'i which is one of the actions done during Hajj. And this was significant because this was when Ibrahim Aislam did another action of leaving. He was commanded to leave his wife and Ismail in the desert. And his wife ran between Safa and Marwa, which is known as a Sa'i. It's done by all the pilgrims, the Hujjaj. So likely what he was doing also was mentioning this great miracle that happened to them and the trust that his mother had. And he mentioned this before telling him about the dream he had. قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ O oh my son, إِنِّي أَرَى Verily I see, or I am seeing, إِنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ That I am seeing myself slaughter you. So, إِنِّي أَرَى I explain this, أَرَى is a mudara verb, meaning that he saw this dream over and over again. And this is as opposed to the dream of Yusuf Islam. When he first saw his dream, he told his father, فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى So then he, he asked him, what do you think? He says, قَالَ يَا أَبَتِي O oh my dear father, إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ So he knew, Ismail Islam knew it was a command. إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ That you will find me, إن شاء الله, God willing, from those who are patient. Now, a question from a student was, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command something which is haram? Slaughtering your son is a haram action in any law for, for any prophet. And I would say, well, it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah calls it, inna hadha, verily this, inna hadha, lahuwa al-bala'un mubin. From all the prophets, this was the greatest test given to any of the prophets mentioned. That's one point. If we look at the life of Ibrahim Aysam, similar events happened. For example, when he left Ismail and his mother in the middle of a desert and left them there. It was a great test also. And that would be haram to leave somebody in the desert and leave them. That will be death. But it shows the trust that both Ibrahim Islam and the mother of Ismail had. So these are great trials 
that were given to the greatest of people. So that's how I would answer that question. Then it says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ Then when they both submitted and laid him down, the, the way you lay down an animal to be slaughtered. And then it says, وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا إِبْرَاهِيمُ Let's look at Ayah 103 and 104. Let's assume this wow in Ayah 104 has been omitted. So let's take that out. And I want to just show you how the meaning would be changed if we did this. In fact, if we take the wow out, Ayah 104 would be the response to the condition. So it would be, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ When they both submitted and he laid him down to be slaughtered. نَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا Ibrahim. What would the meaning be? It would be that he would have put him down to be slaughtered. And when he put him down, before slaughtering him, before slaughtering him, he was called by Allah SWT. If the wow was not there, it would actually match closely to the story of the people of the scripture. In that, before he even slaughtered, he was called out to stop the slaughtering. He was told that he fulfilled what he was commanded to do. And he was given the ram to slaughter in in the place of Ismail Islam. And obviously in their case, they say it's Ishaq. But that's, that's not the point. The point I'm trying to mention is that the wow changes the meaning. The fact that the wow is there it would mean that the jawab is mahdhuf. It's omitted and it's understood. So, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ ذَبَحَهُ He slaughtered him. That would be the implied jawab. The response to the condition. And where do we get that response? قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا Verily, you have fulfilled the vision. What was the vision that he saw? Inni ara fil manami anni adbahuka. I see verily that I am slaughtering you. I am slaughtering. So slaughtering took place. It wasn't sa adbahuka or sofa adbahuka adbahuka. In other words, the vi- in the vision he had. And the vision was a first-person vision, as if he was doing it in the dream. It wasn't third-person, like seeing himself doing it. It was in the first person. And an example of a third-person dream would be the ones mentioned in Surat Yusuf, with the two companions of the sijin, of the jail. So taking this literally, what would we say the story is? That he put him down, Ismail, I say, he put him down in the slaughtering position, and slaughtered him. I would say, he would have killed him. وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا Ibrahim. That wow means it's a new sentence. And we called out to Ibrahim saying, O oh Ibrahim, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا Verily, you have fulfilled the vision or the dream. And there it says, إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ and verily like this, we reward the muhsineen, the good doers. And how did he reward him? There was a massive trial he had. The reward was that he gave him and his progeny, or in this case his son, the strength to go ahead with it, bearing it with patience and full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he also makes a difficult situation easier when one lays his full trust. And then it says, إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينَ As we said, it's verily, this is indeed, most certainly, the manifest trial or test. And then I n- number 107 is very important because it explains the whole event, what happened. وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبِحٍ عَظِيمٍ We ransomed him with a great sacrifice. In Arabic, a ram is called a kepsh. This is the animal, a ram, that was slaughtered instead of Ismail. Now, for example, 
you have an action like fasting. You miss a day and you can't make it up. So what do you do? You pay a fidya, where you feed a miskin, a poor person each day that you miss. So that action of feeding is a fidya for not doing the other action, which is fasting. Now, some scholars said that the fidya of slaughtering the ram was because he didn't slaughter Ismail alayhi salam. This is actually incorrect because he did slaughter. Because he saw in his dream that he slaughtered and قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَةِ That you fulfilled the vision or the dream. So he did the slaughtering. So that comes to the other meaning for fidya. A fidya is also a substitute. For example, in Surat Al-Ma'arij, it talks about يُوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذِمْ بِبَنِي that he would love nothing more than to ransom himself from the punishment of the day by his children. And his wife and his brothers. And so on. So here it's talking about the criminal where he would wish that he could substitute himself for the ones that were the closest to him in this world. So somebody taking somebody else's place. So this is actually what happened. وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عظيم. So Ibrahim Islam slaughtered. He finished the slaughtering. And he, when he looked down and thought he would see his son, he saw the kebsh, the ram that was slaughtered. So what happened was substitution took place. Ismail Islam, by a miracle, was substituted. And Ismail was safe and sound. This is based on a direct reading of the Quran. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask, inshallah. Please subscribe to the channel. Please like. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.